argument of counsel, it is now your duty to make a decision as to the appropriate sentence that should be imposed upon the defendant for the crime of first-degree murder. There are two possible punishments. One, life imprisonment without the possibility of parole or death. In making your decision, you must first unanimously determine whether the aggravating factors alleged by the state have been proven beyond a reasonable doubt. An aggravating factor is a circumstance that increases the gravity of a crime or the harm to a victim. No facts other than proven aggravating factors may be considered in support of a death sentence. The aggravating factors alleged by the state are one, Grant Amato was previously convicted of another capital felony. The crime of first degree premeditated murder is a capital felony. The quote, prior violent felony, end quote, aggravator, includes violent felony convictions resulting from the crimes committed on separate victims during a single criminal episode. The first degree murder was committed Two, the first degree murder was committed in a cold, calculated, and premeditated manner without any pretense of moral or legal justification. Cold means the murder was the product of calm and cool reflection. Calculated means having a careful plan or prearranged design to commit murder. A killing is premeditated if it occurs after the defendant consciously decides to kill the decision must be present in the mind at the time of the killing. The law does not fix the exact time period, at the exact period of time that must pass between the formation of the premeditated intent to kill and the killing. The period of time must be long enough to allow reflection by the defendant. The premeditated intent to kill must be formed before the killing. However, in order for this aggravating factor to apply, a heightened level of premeditation demonstrated by a substantial period of reflection is required. A pretense of moral or legal justification is any claim of justification or excuse that though insufficient to reduce the degree of murder, nevertheless rebuts the otherwise cold calculated or premeditated nature of the murder. You have heard evidence about the impact of these murders on the family of Margaret Amato, Chad Amato, and Cody Amato, and the friends and hospital community of Cody Amato. This evidence was presented to show each victim's uniqueness as an individual and the resultant loss by Margaret Amato's, Chad Amato's, and Cody Amato's deaths. However, you may not consider this evidence as an aggravating factor. As explained before the presentation of evidence, the state has the burden to prove an aggravating factor beyond a reasonable doubt. A reasonable doubt is not a mere possible doubt, a speculative, imaginary, or forced doubt. Such a doubt must not influence you to disregard an aggravating factor if you have an abiding conviction that it exists. On the other hand, if after carefully considering, comparing, and weighing all of the evidence, you do not have an abiding conviction that the aggravating factor exists, or if having a conviction, it is one which is not stable, but one which wavers and vacillates, then the aggravating factor has not been proved beyond a reasonable doubt, and you must not consider it in providing a verdict. A reasonable doubt as to the existence of an aggravating factor may arise from the evidence, conflict in the evidence, or the lack of evidence. If you have a reasonable doubt to the existence of an aggravating factor, you must find that it does not exist. However, if you have no reasonable doubt, you should find the aggravating factor does exist. A finding that an aggravating factor exists must be unanimous. That is, all of you must agree that each presented aggravating factor exists. You will be provided a form that makes this finding as, as to each alleged aggravating factor, and you should indicate whether or not you find each aggravating factor has been proven beyond a reasonable doubt. 
If you do not unanimously find that at least one aggravating factor was proven by the state beyond a reasonable doubt, then the defendant is not eligible for the death penalty, and your verdict must be for the sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. At such a point, your deliberations are complete. If, however, you unanimously find that one or more of the aggravating factors has or have been proven beyond a reasonable doubt, then the defendant is eligible for the death penalty. And you must make additional findings to determine wh whether the appropriate sentence to be imposed is life imprisonment without the possibility of parole or death. If you do unanimously find the existence of at least one aggravating factor, and that aggravating factor, and that the aggravating factor or factors is or are sufficient to impose a sentence of death, the next step in the process is for you to determine whether any mitigating circumstances exist. A mitigating circumstance is anything that supports a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole and can be anything which might indicate that the death penalty is not appropriate. It is not limited to the facts surrounding the crime. A mitigating circumstance may include any aspect of the defendant's character, background, or life, or any circumstance of the offense that may reasonably indicate that the death penalty is not an appropriate sentence in this case. It is the defendant's burden to prove <coughs> that one or more mitigating circumstances exist. Mitigating circumstances do not need to be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. Instead, the defendant need only establish a mitigating circumstance by the greater weight of the evidence, which means evidence that more likely than not tends to establish the existence of a mitigating circumstance. If you determine by the greater weight of the evidence that a mitigating circumstance exists, you must consider it established and give that evidence such weight as you determine it should receive in reaching your verdict about the appropriate sentence to be imposed. Any juror persuaded as to the existence of mitigating circumstance must consider it in this case. Among the mitigating circumstances you may consider are one, Grant has no significant history of prior criminal activity. Conviction of a theft is not an aggravating factor to be considered in determining the penalty to be imposed on the defendant, but evidence of that crime may be considered by the jury in determining whether the defendant has a significant history of prior criminal activity. Two, Grant, Amato, Grant Amato's age at the time of the crime. Three, the existence of any other factors and Grant Amato's character, background, or life, or the circumstances of the offense that would mitigate against the imposition of the death penalty. Your decision regarding the appropriate sentence should be based upon proven aggravating factors and established mitigating circumstances that have been presented to you during these proceedings. The next step in this process is for each of you to determine whether the aggravating factor or factors that have unanimously found to exist outweigh the mitigating circumstance or circumstances that you have individually found to exist. The process of weighing aggravating factors and mitigating circumstances is not mechanical or mathematical in the process. It's not a mechanical or mathematical process. In other words, you should not merely total the number of aggravating factors and compare that number to the total number of mitigating circumstances. The law contemplates that different factors or circumstances may be different, given different weight or values by different jurors. Therefore, in your decision-making process, each individual juror must decide what weight is to be given to a particular factor or circumstance. Regardless of the results of each juror's individual weighing process, even if you find that sufficient aggravators outweigh the mitigators, the law neither compels nor requires you to determine that the defendant should be sentenced to death. Once each juror has weighed the proven factors, 
he or she must determine the appropriate punishment for the defendant. The jury's decision regarding the appropriate sentence must be unanimous if death is to be imposed. To repeat what I have said, if your verdict is that the defendant should be sentenced to death, your finding that each aggravating factor exists must be unanimous. Your finding that the aggravating factors are sufficient to impose death must be unanimous. Your finding that the aggravating factor or factors found to exist outweigh the established mitigating circumstances must be unanimous. And your decision to impose a sentence of death must be unanimous. You will be provided a form to reflect your findings and decision regarding the appropriate sentence. If your vote on the appropriate sentence is less than unanimous, the defendant will be sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. The fact that the jury can make its decision on a single ballot should not influence you to act hastily or without due regard to the gravity of these proceedings. Before you vote, you should carefully consider and weigh the evidence, realizing that a human life is at stake, and bring your best judgment to bear in reaching your verdict. When considering aggravating factors and mitigating circumstances, it is up to you to decide which evidence is reliable. You should use your common sense in deciding which is the best evidence and which evidence should not be relied upon in making your decision as to what sentence should be imposed. You may find some of the evidence not reliable or less reliable than other evidence. You should consider how the witnesses acted as well as what they said. Some things you should consider are one, did the witness seem to have op the opportunity to see and know the things about which the witness testified? Two, did the witness seem to have an accurate memory? Three, was the witness honest and straightforward in answering the attorney's questions? Four, did the witness have some interest in how the case should be decided? Five, did the witness's testimony agree with the other testimony and other evidence in the case? The fact that a witness is employed in law enforcement does not mean that his or her testimony deserves more or less consideration than that of any other witnesses. Expert witnesses are like other witnesses with one exception. The law permits an expert witness to give an opinion. However, an expert's opinion is only reliable when given on a subject about which you believe that person to be an expert. Like other witnesses, you may believe or disbelieve all or any part of an expert's testimony. It is entirely proper for a lawyer to talk to a witness about what testimony the witness would give if called to the courtroom. The witness should not be discredited by talking to a lawyer about his or her testimony. You may rely upon your own conclusion about the credibility of any witness. A juror may believe or disbelieve all or any part of the evidence or the testimony of any witness. The defendant exercised a fundamental right by choosing not to be a witness in this case. You must not be influenced in any way by that decision. No juror should ever be concerned that the defendant did or did not take the witness stand to give testimony in the case. There are some general rules that you apply to your discussion. You must follow these rules in order to make a lawful decision. One, you must follow the laws that are set out in these instructions. If you fail to follow the law, your decision will be a miscarriage of justice. There is no reason to fail for failing to follow the law in this case. All of us are depending upon you to make a wise and legal decision in this matter. Two, your decisions must be based only upon the evidence that you have heard from the testimony of the witnesses, have seen in the form of exhibits in evidence, and these instructions. Three. Your decisions must not be based upon the fact that you feel sorry for anyone or angry at anyone. Four, remember the lawyers are not on trial. Your feelings about them should not influence your decisions. Five, the jury is not to discuss any questions that jurors wrote that were not asked by the court and must not hold that against either party. Six, your decision should not be influenced by feelings of prejudice, bias, or sympathy prejudice or racial or ethnic bias. Your decisions must be based on the evidence and the law contained in these instructions. In just a few moments, you will be taken to the jury room by the court deputy. When you've reached decisions in conformity with these instructions, the appropriate form should be signed and dated by your foreperson. 
During deliberations, jurors must communicate about the case only with one another and only when all jurors are present in the courtroom. You are not to communicate with any person outside the jury about this case, and you must not talk about this case in person or through telephone, writing, or electronic communication, such as blog, Twitter, email, text message, or any other means. Many of you have cell phones, tablets, laptops, or other electronic devices here in the courtroom. The rules do not allow you to bring your phones or any of those types of electronic devices into the jury room. Kindly leave those devices on your seats where they will be guarded by the court deputy while you deliberate. Do not contact anyone to assist you during deliberations. These communication rules apply until I discharge you at the end of the case. If you become aware of any violation of these instructions or any other instruction I've given in this case, you must tell me by giving a note to the court deputy. During this trial, items were received into evidence as exhibits. You may examine whatever exhibits you think will be helpful in your deliberations. These exhibits will be sent into the jury room with you when you begin to deliberate. I cannot participate in your deliberations in any way. Please disregard anything that I may have said or done that made you think I preferred one decision over another. If you need to communicate with me, send a note through the court deputy signed by the foreperson. If you have questions, I will talk with the attorneys before I answer so it may take some time. You may continue your deliberations while you wait for my answer. I will answer any questions if I can in writing or orally here in open court. In closing, let me remind you that it is important that you follow the law spelled out in these instructions. There are no other laws that apply to this case. Even if you do not like the laws that must be applied, you must use them. For more than two centuries, we've lived by the Constitution and the law, and no jurors have the right to violate the rules we all share. Now, one thing I would like to, you all have the jury, uh, the verdict form, but I am briefly going to just read through the verdict forms for you. Uh, it indicates for jur jury verdict form as to count one for Margaret Amato, we the jury find as follows as to grant Amato in this case, A, aggravating factors as to count one. We the jury unanimously find that the state has established beyond a reasonable doubt the existence of the aggravating factor that the first degree murder was committed in a cold, calculated, and premeditated murder without any pretense of moral or legal justification with the space for yes or no. We, the jury, find, unanimously find that the state has established beyond a reasonable doubt the existence of the aggravating factor that Grant Amato was previously convicted of another capital felony with a space for a yes or no. If you answer yes to at least one of the aggravating factors listed, please proceed to Section B. If you answer no to every aggravating factor listed, do not proceed to Section B. Grant is not eligible for the death sentence and will, not be, sent, and will be sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. B. Sufficiency of the aggravating factors as to count one. Reviewing the aggravating factors that we unanimously found to be established beyond a reasonable doubt, section A, we the jury unanimously find the aggravating factors are sufficient to warrant a possible set death sentence with a sentence of de death with the space for yes or no. If you answer yes to section B, please proceed to section C. If you answer no to section B, do not proceed to section C. Grant a model will be sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. C, mitigating circumstances. One or more individual jurors find that one or more mitigating circumstances was established by the greater weight of the evidence with a space for a yes or no. Please proceed to section D regardless of your findings in section C. D, eligibility for the death penalty for count one. We the jury unanimously find that the aggravating factor factors that were proven beyond a reasonable doubt, section A, outweigh the mitigating circumstances established, section C, above, as to count one, with a space for yes or no. If you answer yes to section D, please proceed to section E. If you answer no to section D, do not proceed. Grant Amato will be sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. As to E, jury verdict as to the death penalty, Having unanimously found that at least one aggravating factor has been established beyond a reasonable doubt, Section A, that the aggravating factor or factors is or are sufficient to warrant a sentence of death, Section B, and the aggravating factor or factors outweigh the mitigating circumstances, Section D, we, the jury, unanimously find that Grant Amato should be sentenced to death with a space for yes or no. If your vote is to impose death is less than the unanimous, the trial court shall impose a sentence of life without the possibility of parole. A space for dating and the signature of the foreperson with the identification number. 
As to Chad Amato, same. We, the jury, find as follows as to Grant Amato in this case, listing the aggravating factors as to count two. Uh, we, we, the jury, unanimously find the state is established beyond uh, the reasonable doubt the existence of those aggravating factors. It goes as to both aggravating factors, exactly the same as to each of these for Chad, as well as the same for Cody. And then the uh, indicating to Section B, sufficiency of the aggravating factors, where the jury is to determine whether they unanimously find the aggravating factors are sufficient to warrant a possible sentence of death. If you answer yes to Section B, you proceed to Section C. If it's no to Section B, then you don't proceed to Section B, and grant a model will be sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. As to Section C, the mitigating circumstances, again, it's one or more individual jurors find that one or more mitigating circumstances was established by the greater weight of the evidence with a space for yes or no. And then as to Section D, the eligibility for the death penalty for count two, uh, and you proceed to Section D regardless of your findings in Section C, and the jury has to unanimously find the aggravating factors were proven beyond a reasonable doubt in Section A, outweigh the mitigating circumstances as established as Section C above as to count two, with a space for a yes or no. Then as to section, then if you answer yes to section D, again or proceed to section E, and the jury as to the death penalty must unanimously find. Uh, if they, having unanimously found that uh, at least one aggravating factor has been established beyond a reasonable doubt, section A, that the aggravating factor or factors is or are sufficient to warrant a sentence of death, section B, and the aggravating factor or factors outweigh the mitigating circumstances that are in section D. We, the jury, unanimously find that the grant to motto should be sentenced to death with the space for yes or no. If you vote to impose death is less than unanimous, the trial court shall impose a sentence of life without the possibility of parole. Same signature and jury identification number. And Cody Amato's uh, is the same. All three are exactly the same uh, other than the names and just indicating the count number. At this point, you all are to retire, except the three alternates. You shall remain in the jury box at this point. Uh, you are to consider the uh, jury instructions, and you will all have, and then you will have the verdict form as well. Um, let me get the final instructions to them. are the jury instructions. All right. All right. Um, based upon the circumstances, uh, understanding the prior objections that were made by the defense, any objection otherwise as to the jury instructions as read at this time? Okay. All right. Uh, I have the um, proposed verdict form that had the mitigating circumstances as indicated by the defense. I'm filing those with the court and the clerk. So there's a record as to that. Uh, the other thing is, is I will also file the list as indicated for the mitigating circumstances um, as well. Um, both of those will be in the court file uh, for the record. Uh, now, I got it. It's up there on the. It's on the overhead. Um, yes, I can. And just so you know, I'm writing proposed on here. The defense is proposed, so that way it's indicated, because uh, otherwise it's just handed as the jury verdict form. I. Uh, I appreciate you all coming back again. Uh, again, at this point, just in case, depending on how the trial went was whether or not we would need the alternates and with the time frame that comes in between with everyone, we are not sure how these cases will proceed, so we do require you all to, uh, at this point, be present for here just in case we need you. Uh, now, at this point, you all are essentially going to be discharged, you're free to go, which also means you're allowed to speak to anyone. You also can refuse to speak to anyone about this case. 
Uh, it's up to you. Uh, that includes friend, family, coworkers, or anybody who asks. Uh, you may have other people who, uh, based upon the, uh, this type of case, may ask you questions. Uh, you can refuse to speak to them, or you can choose to speak to them. That's entirely up to you at this point. You also now are free to watch all the news you want, go on Facebook as many times as you want. Um, so all of those restrictions are also no longer imposed, okay? Uh, I remember correctly. Okay, well, let's do it this way. That's what I thought. Okay, so I had that right. All right, and otherwise your notes, if you could give the deputy your notes. All right, let me take those, and then we'll make sure that those are all destroyed. But thank you very much. You guys are free to go at this point. Uh, you will go out until we have a verdict or a question. Um.